Are there any people who should not consume fermented foods? You know, there are some people who seem to react negatively to them. I know histamine's an issue. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that's it. Like if you've got SIBO and small intestine bacterial overgrowth and there's microbes in the small intestine producing histamine and you eat the fermented foods, it's almost a diagnosis that and you have a reaction, like a lot of gas and bloating, it's almost a diagnosis. There's something wrong in the small intestine. So what I tell people is don't eat them yet, but get, handle that condition. You know, get rid of that bacterial overgrowth, that fungal overgrowth. There's, you know, fantastic people out there teaching you how to do that. And focus on that for probably about three months. I think it's a really good idea to look up the FODMAP foods uh, that's Monash, Univer Monash University over in Australia identified a certain foods that cause gas and bloating. Uh, and so look those up and avoid those also for a couple of months. That'll bring the gas and bloating down and then start working on the problem in the small intestine. But then many people, you know, get the problem is better and then have it under control and then it comes back. And that's because a lot of the, these people, these experts, they are not explaining the importance of establishing the inner ecosystem in the, in the large intestine, which are going to control the, um, you know, the SIBO, these bacteria from moving back up into the small intestine or whatever. So it's really important to begin to introduce, and, and the first one to introduce are the fermented vegetables because lactobacillus plantarum uh, well, it is degrades histamine. So that's the safe one to start on and small amounts at the right time. And then start to focus on your inner ecosystem in the colon so you can protect yourself from the SIBO.